Welcome to my class, Adding VIP Services with Archival Science. You tackle complex photo management problems every day, but you don't have to start completely from scratch. The best practices from a related field, archival science, are very much applicable to photo workflows, processes, and professional offerings. Understanding them will add to your expertise and enhance your business. Learn how to connect with VIP clients who will pay for this expertise and white glove services you can implement with them. This virtual class includes an interview with Laura Woolsey, owner of Memory Forward in Austin, Texas, and her colleague, Tom Hensel. Memory Forward is a leader in the photo organization industry, helping Austin area families and businesses create order from their photo chaos for almost 15 years. So today I'm here with Laura and Tom with Memory Forward, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their experience in the photo management world. Hi guys. Hi. Okay. Hi. For sure. Thank you for being here. Wait, we're in your place. Yes. <laughs> I'll get that out. Can you all please introduce yourselves and let the folks at home know a little bit about your experience and kind of what you do in the photo management world. Sure, sure. I'm Laura Wolsey. I'm the owner, as Amberly said. Um, the Memory Forward is about 15 years old now. That's hard to believe. But I have I came from a computer science background, web development, and decided I would make a career shift about 15 years ago and uh, decided to be an organizer briefly and then sort of quickly found that photos were a really great fit for my skill set and that it was a, a huge need that, um, you know, beginning of the digital era really, that, that hadn't quite been figured out yet, so here I am. Great. Tom? And uh, I'm Tom. I'm the Client Operations Manager here at Memory Forward, and we've, um, I've been here for three and a half years or so. I came from a special collections library background, uh, working with rare books and manuscripts and uh, helping patrons use materials. And that's transitioned very nicely into helping people manage their photos and taking care of items that are special to them. Okay. Thank you so much for introducing yourselves. The reason that I wanted to interview these guys is because I myself have a background in archival science. So I went to UT Austin and I have a master in science and in information studies and in archives and libraries. And one of my focuses is outreach as well. And I have been in partnership with Memory Forward through my job at the Permanent Legacy Foundation. So I am the preservation services manager at Permanent Legacy Foundation. Permanent.org is where you can find us. And we have been in partnership with Memory Forward for digitization services for a little while now. And because I have been able to use digitization services all over the United States, I've really come to understand that there are different industry standards that exist across the board. And what we want to talk to you today is a little bit about standardization, the need for a higher standard of processes within photo management. And I really have found that Memory Forward does such an excellent job at this. So that is why I wanted to have them come and speak to you today. So, Laura, can you please tell me a little bit about how you've seen the photo management industry change in the past 15 years? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot. <laughs> it's changed quite a lot. I started my career as a photo organizer and uh, working on an Epson flatbed, one of the earliest models of, of Epson scanners with an auto feed tray on the top. Uh, you know, I was probably 300 dpi at best, and I about a minute per photo, I believe, but I didn't have to touch the scans, and I thought that was just amazing and have to touch the picture. They just went automatically through this machine in a very antiquated way. Um, so that's the starting point. And, and today we, as photo managers, a lot of us are using camera scanning technology now. We've gone through dozens of different um, 
iterations of hardware, I'd say, for preserving printed images, whether it's slides, negatives, prints. Uh, and now the de facto standard has evolved into camera scanning and using a, a high pixel uh, DSLR camera to capture the best possible image we can so that we're ensuring that our clients' memories are future-proof and they're not gonna wish they had, you know, they, don't, they would have to come back in a, in a few years and say, well, the technology's improved, let's, let's see what we can do now. We'll, we'll have a, a permanent safe copy of their, of their photos. And Tom, do you think that you could expand a little bit more on your experience in archival science and your experience with rare books and what kind of skills do you bring as an archives professional into the photo management world? Well, uh, I, when I worked in uh, a lot of the rare book management library, I was lucky enough to get to see lots of different types of materials go by, which included lots of photos. Um, and um, I would help patrons use materials in the reading room, but also was part of the digitization pr process, um, a, a specific part of it. Uh, and we, going going from there to here, this is, the photo organization was not what I was intending to find when I came to Austin, but uh, it's it's been helpful to come from a place of knowledge about something that people don't really think they need to know about when they're caring for their photos. Um, you know, I spend a lot of time explaining what we do at Memory Forward, but having a knowledge of some archival practices as well is very helpful because a lot of people have one special photo or a few handful of special, a handful of special things that are from the late 1800s or are the only copy of their grandparents' wedding photo or something like that. We, we want to be able to preserve those things physically as well as digitally uh, when we can. Laura, can you tell me about a time when you gave exceptional service to a customer and what that meant to them? Hmm, wait a minute. It's hard to pick, you have so many yeah. that, that receive <laughs> exceptional service. Think of one and I'll elaborate. Uh, somebody who received exceptional service. Well, um, we've had clients who for whom we perform one service, um, let's say we've scanned some of their photos and we notice something special in their photos, like a, we, we find a particular photo of their father, perhaps we, um, during an interview with them to start the project, we found, uh, we, I may have talked to the client about what their, what their father did for a living. Uh, or for leisure, and uh, then we found a photo of the client as a young child playing a toy instrument with her father, who was a musician, and she had never seen that photo before, uh, and it was from uh, the 50s or so, and, you know, being able to highlight that for her kind of put the whole project in perspective, because it wasn't just she was having her collection digitized because it was what she was supposed to do. It was, she was also discovering these wonderful things and we were helping highlight those for her. So she was really pleased about that and kind of led us into a new area of trust in our relationship with her as well. I would add that uh, I think a lot of the occasions where people are surprised and, and really just blown away by what we're doing is it involves negatives and slides. Um, because they're not as readily visible to the human eye. Slides somewhat are, of course, but um, the example I thought of was a client who came to us primarily with her father's materials. And her father has passed away in the 80s. And he was exposed to Agent Orange in the Korean War and developed cancer from that. And the images that we were able to uncover in negative form of him in the war um, in his encampment um, were really a surprise to her and, and a touching piece of his history that she had not seen. That's really meaningful to me, being an Army veteran. So I can relate to how precious those memories are of your military service and then passing those down throughout the generations and just capturing those moments in time where you go through something that only one percent of the population will ever go through 
And so it's kind of a unique experience that you have. I can personally attest to Memory Forward's exceptional service. I can tell you just one specific thing that I can think of that really hit home for me when I first met Laura. We exchanged some emails about my grandma's favorite photo, or my favorite photo of my grandmother. And she was at TCU, which is her alma mater. <laughs> and I, you know, just casually sent the photo to Laura and then she started sleuthing right away. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so incredible. You're so knowledgeable about how to detect certain pieces of information and what we call metadata within photos. Can you talk a little bit about metadata standards and a little bit about so this is about VIP services, right? This is about an exceptional level of service. And I feel that metadata is such a hot topic right now. Do you want to expand on how you handle that at an elevated level? Sure. Um, the, I'd say the two pieces of metadata that we are always making sure that we um, take care of for our clients is the date. Um, that it was taken, the photo, whether it's a digital photo or a scan photo, and then the people within the photos. Uh, it can certainly go well beyond that with other metadata tags, information, captions, descriptions, stories, and those are important as well. But the, the two things that we really always capture for someone is making sure that we have the date correct. And there's a lot of tricks involved in that with, with the digital dates get messed up. As you probably know, there's you know, copying photos from computer and devices to other devices yeah, can often corrupt those dates when we have tricks to make those correct again. And then, of course, scan photos, we're doing a lot of that detective work to um, figure out at least an approximation of the date that the um, photo was originally taken and not when it was scanned. So we, um, with the faces of the people that are in the photos, we use spatial recognition software um, a lot of detective work as well. We, we have a, a resident earlobe detective, we call her. She's quite good at uh, differentiating very similar looking uh, people, related people by their earlobes. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> times when I can't tell who's who, she's very good at that. So it's a lot of fun, a lot of detective work, like you said. You know, that, that dorm picture was, uh, the TCU dorm was really cool because I was able to to look up the history of, I was just trying to identify what dorm room that was shot in and, and based on the, the radiator in the background and, and the year that it was taken, I was able to get a pretty good guess at it. And to me, that's an exceptional level of service. You know, I could have gone, she could have just been like, oh, I love this photo. What a great photo and left it at that, but she did it. She took it many steps forward and just made me feel like special. You know, you want your VIP clients to feel special. You want all of your clients to feel special. And I feel like that is just going one step above your job description is something that I've always done. I don't know if I imagine Tom is the same way. Well, we, we, it's, it's important to give people something nice that they can, they can use and that their, their, um, their heirs will be able to use as well. And um, it's it's important to do a good job uh, because it's these materials are important to us because they're in our office and we're taking good care of them, but they're much more important to the people that they belong to. Um, and similarly along the metadata lines, we, we focus on those two most, those two pieces of metadata most because they're the easiest for most people to use. Um, that's another thing we try to focus on is we can provide more to our clients than that, but many of our clients can't or aren't sure how to use metadata and um, aren't sure what's important to them. And as a baseline, we try to we try to include at least those two pieces of information when possible because those are the most straightforward. Who's in the picture and what's in front? Those are those are kind of the you can get a lot further when you have those two things to start with. So that's what we try to focus on. So Laura, that's me. Y'all have a unique 
co-working relationship because you're you're in the photo management world. Tom comes from an archival background. Can you tell me, I know that you are giving Tom all kinds of advice. You already have given me much sage wisdom from which I greatly appreciate as a businesswoman. Can you tell me a little bit about what Tom has brought to the table from his background? Yeah, um, Tom brings a vast knowledge of, of archival sciences and you know, just sort of inherently understands the importance of digitizing something at a high quality. Um, he's always able to, this isn't necessarily because of his background, but I should say he's very warm with the clients. Um, something I never felt that I was that great with. So over these last few years, I've really appreciated having him as the main face of memory forward. And we like to say Tom's unflappable. So, you know, even a frustrated client <laughs> turns out uh, is not an issue for him. So. Well, we never have any frustrated clients <laughs> because <laughs> they're wonderful. But occasionally, there are people who take a little bit more it happens. help than other people. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Sure. That's great. Sure. Tom, can you tell me a little bit more about what you feel, what does it mean to you when I say VIP services? Uh, it means paying attention uh, to what the clients want and need uh, and understanding what they want and need and, and being attentive to those needs uh, and informing them of what we can provide for them and uh, usually surprising them with what we can provide to them. Uh, but that's... that's uh, Understanding what what our clients need or will need, um, and uh, providing it to them at excellent quality. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I think of when I think of VIP being being uh, taking the time to to get to know them and understand them. And when they call two years after you finished your, their project, saying, "Oh, good good to hear from you. How's your how's your daughter, whose name I still remember." Or uh, something like that. That's that's the sort of thing that we we don't we don't have so many clients that we can't we can't do that. And it's important to be able to do that sort of thing. Very much. Can I add something to that? I recently, I recently came across my notes from um, when Tom was interviewed, which was many iterations of Memory Forward ago. But we won't go into that. Uh, but one of the things he said that I, I took note of was um, that paying attention will get you a very long way, and I think that was the moment where I said, okay, you're hired <laughs> because that, that's what matters. Like paying attention, giving each person, each client the, the care and, you know, the, the grandma photo, the special attention that they deserve for their memories. I know that when we talk about releasing the collections back to the client that there are little touches that you do at memory forward that show that you care much more than just they're just a client you know i feel like whenever you use memory forward for their services that they treat you like family and that's important because they're handling your family collection can you talk a little bit more about the elevated way that you give collections back to clients? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, so we we often think of client materials in two in two ways: the digital and the physical. Um, we'll start with the physical. Uh, as far as elevating the materials, often we receive client photos, documents, memorabilia, all tossed together in bins. Um, uh, things are stuck into albums that are that are sticky and causing the photos to discolor. Um, and we remove anything we can from, from those types of situations and we return the photos to clients after organizing and scanning them, uh, often in archival housings, um, stable, stable housings that at least will not leach anything new into into the materials, uh, and uh, we 
we can certainly make people's collections more compact and more stable for the long term, uh, physically in that way. Uh, as far as digital digital goes, um, we we certainly uh, through our organizational process and scanning make collection materials much more accessible by labeling things clearly, things that people never knew they had. Um, you know, there are, these photos are not just for our clients, but for the people who come after and by giving things, even approximate dates when we can, approximate names, family groupings, anything like that that we can put into the photos helps them and helps, helps their heirs. Um, and when we come across important pieces of client collections that we're unsure about or that we think they might have feelings about, we'll ask them. Uh, and we'll, we'll say, we found this set of photos which didn't come up during our discussion earlier. Is this something that needs to be singled out because it's special? Um, we know that after we work with you, we're going to be doing a book for you. Is this something that you'd like to have included in the book? Or we know that you only have this photo of your parents' wedding and it had a rip on it. You didn't discuss this, but it was an easy thing for us to do to remove this rip uh, in the digital image. Here's how it looks now. Um, so we try to the those are the those are the straightforward things that we 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 do to make digital collections better, um, including the addition of that data that we talked about and that sort of thing. And those are all ways that even if you're just getting started. You're building relationships, you're handling, handling the technical aspects, you're going using systems to do that, but you're also using your soft skills to do that, which I believe are equally as important to your technical skills. But if you're just starting out, you can pay attention to these soft skills that you can implement easily with your clients. So that if you're just starting out and you don't have capital and you don't have, you know, a full-time job and you're just, you're trying to get this off the ground, those are things that you can do to get an elevated client. Speaking of that, Laura, do you have other tips for business owners who are just getting started in the photo management world? I would say... Try to focus on one thing that you really feel like you are good at. Um, probably my biggest mistake early on and what made my business grow more slowly than I would have liked was to focus on everything. Because I, I can handle it. I can figure this out. I can buy the scanner. I can I have a technology background. You know, I have everything juggling all at once. And in some ways that worked and, and got me to where I am today. But I really think that Going forward with memory forward, especially, we are going to be primarily focusing on the scanning and capturing of images, not so much the, the digital organization. And that's something that's probably a long time overdue for us, quite honestly, um, to, to really specialize in that because it is what we are exceptional at. So find that thing that you're exceptional at um, and, and try to learn everything you can about that so you can focus your energy and not feel overwhelmed because there is a lot of, of aspects of this of this business, this industry. Yes, managing overwhelm. Great <laughs> tips. That is something that I am managing right now at uh, Permanent. Just building a business within a nonprofit is, it's a lot. And so being able to have mentors, like I really look at Laura as a mentor. She has helped me in so many ways to step into this role and step into this industry with confidence. There are other people out there that I'm sure you know that you can easily get mentorship from. Tom, can you tell me a little bit about what, it's, what it was like for you to enter into the photo management world coming from an archival background? Yeah, uh, it's it's been... It's been interesting and uh, getting to know, it's a relatively intimate community um, of, of photo, management, photo managers and a really developing industry. Um, seeing the rate of change of how things are done and how people are learning together and working together uh, is quite 
it's quite nice. Uh, it's it's nice to see everybody supporting each other uh, and and trying to figure out the best way to do things for their business and for their clients because um, it's there are there are lots of small businesses, but there are not a lot of small businesses that are doing what we do, and it's 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 a it's a good it's a good community. Um, which was is probably my biggest takeaway from coming into this industry. And Laura, I just have one more question for you. When we talk about extras, you know, like the little the little touches that you'll do, for instance, what you sent me during Christmas mm -hmm. was a dry erase board of the photo I told you about before of my grandma from TCU and I know Tom has sent me things throughout our time, me using them as a vendor that have been really special. Can you talk, I know we've touched on that, but are there products that you can recommend people will give to their clients? Uh, sure, yeah, there is uh, just about anything that Miller's offers. Um, I don't know how recent those additions are, but we've been surprised by some of the the little gift type items, um, decks of cards. Um, that was a hit last year. We did that for our VIP clients with a custom photo on the on the card itself on the surface of the, the playing deck. Um, specific products, or do you want vendors, or what are you thinking? I think just <laughs> specific products. Yeah. Um, blankets are actually a really nice gift. Um, not something people normally think about, but you put a few photos on, on a blanket. Again, uh, not Miller's, but Mvix, I believe, who um, is a sister company to Miller's, um, delivers really beautiful products there. There's other companies that do that as well. Um, yeah, we just want to go, we want the client to have something that's used in their life. Um, obviously, the pictures, we want them to be displayed on a digital frame, and, and that a digital frame is a good example of a gift. Um, but beyond that, just having that little token of, of the experience they have with Memory Forward and something that's special to them is really a fun little thing to do each year. Great. Well, that is the end of our interview. I just wanted to say thank you both for agreeing to do this because I feel like Y'all just, they set the bar really high. <laughs> Memory Forward sets the bar really high. They really understand how to implement VIP services. And yes, this was, this class description was about archival science. That's because I come from an archives background. But really I wanted to know, and the reason I chose this subject was because I was like, what did I even have to offer? Because I came into the photo management world, learning from people like Laura, getting to read Kathy Nelson's book, and pouring over other trainings that the photo managers offer within their community. And I have to say, there was a lot that I had to learn coming in here, even having a Master of Science in Information Studies from the University of Texas at Austin, which is supposed to be a top five, which is a top five <laughs> program. And it's no joke, but I had a lot to learn coming in here. So I just wanted to thank you for your wisdom always. Thank you, Tom, for your, sharing your knowledge and your experience. And we hope that you have enjoyed this class. Thank you.